Three, two, one, action. the Tennessee Waltz. Go ahead, Robert. You may be muted, Robert. Can they hear me? Let me, let me do this. Okay. Big yeah. round of applause! Good job, good job. Good job. Good job. Wow. Yeah. Good, good job, Andrew. Good job. I, I, got, I learned a long time ago, uh, applause is food for a performer. And animator. So uh, the more we give them, the better they'll teach. All right, just a couple things as Andrew's getting ready to um, um, teach his class. And I think, I don't know if he's got any materials to share. I believe I sent them out in the email today. Um, in the email, you should have seen a little link. I'm going to upload it in the chat as well. And I'm going to screen share a couple of uh, uh, events coming up this week. As you know, we have, if you could see this okay, we have a Zoom musical live experience featuring hits of the stage and screen. And I think it says it all, but we have, we're going to have a fantastic show. Um, the question I had from a few students is, who's playing this? It's, it's about two or three Fletcher members or uh, staff members, and I'm not going to tell you who they are. It's a surprise, but the music will be great, and that's happening this uh, Friday at 11 a.m. slash 2 p.m. Eastern. And if you share that email, if you forward that email to your friends and family, they can very easily just click on the website there and it'll automatically bring them to the page to join. And you can just scroll down to the special events and you'll see it's located right there on the calendar there. <clears throat> Let me just refresh my screen there. And if you go to there and you click on that, it should open it up. And they can click right there and join directly from our website. So, and keep your eye out. As you know, we had member appreciation days uh, last week. That's continued throughout the rest of the month. And over the next seven days, we're going to do a series of special invite-only requests that you're going to be getting emails for. Um, we have one today, there's going to be one Friday or Saturday, there's going to be another one next week. So stay, that's not going to be advertised. That's for Fletcher members. Everyone that's on our emailing list will receive those special notices. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Andrew. It's still the same song that you sent me, correct? Uh, or let me spotlight him. It's still the same song. I'll we'll have to unmute Andrew. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to upload that as you start talking. 
All yours, Andrew. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, again, very sorry about the technical difficulties. I know we're all learning this as we go along, and some of us are learning a little bit slower than others. But today we're going to do Could I Have This Dance, which uh, uh, Could I Have This Dance was written by Wayland Holyfield and Bob House, and it was released as a single uh, by Ann Murray in 1980. It was originally released on the soundtrack to the movie Urban Cowboy, and it was also uh, later that year put on uh, a Greatest Hits album by Ann Murray as well. And um, um, I like to do my classes normally in a sort of a, a question and answer format, rather than me just telling you, here's what I like to use. I like to ask what do you guys like to use? What do you think would be a good way to do this? Zoom makes that quite a bit more difficult, but I encourage anyone who wants to please just unmute yourself and holler out a question anytime you like. I don't mind that at all. Um, just try to remember to mute yourself back once you're done again. Um, you can still raise, use the raise hand icon if you like. I know that Sean, Joni are probably keeping an eye out for that. Uh, this is a really nice song that uh, it's a waltz. Um, does anyone, anyone want to unmute themselves and give us a suggestion of a, a background that could work well for this song? All right. Well, I'll give you a couple that I think could work well. The sheet music that I have in front of country me. Country music would be good. Country music. The country music. That's a very good suggestion, and it's certainly a country song. Um, Here's an issue that most folks will run into using a country background. Over here, my button's called country, and I got two of them on this instrument. I'm on a Prestige Plus today. Ooh. And um, the country backgrounds are all in 4-4 four, four time. And with this song being in 3-4 time, uh, it'll, it'll, we'll have trouble lining it up. I don't know if you've ever tried to... Uh, try to count to three with a 4-4 four, four on or vice versa. It doesn't always work too well. Here's a country style. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it just doesn't line but up. But my right. organ has a country waltz. Oh, now there's a heck of a <laughs> suggestion. Country waltz is one of, I think personally, the best options for this song. Uh, it's actually going to be the one that I use today when I play the song. Um, if you have the same copy of sheet music for this song that I do, it says up on the top left, use southern three quarters. Um, that is a background that also works really, really well. Um, southern three quarters is on all of the E-Series products. If you have an E-Series instrument, then you have Southern three quarters. On the little guys, it's under uh, Walt's Pianist. Um, if you have an S-Series instrument or L or an A-Series instrument prior to the Sterling, you're not going to find Southern three quarters on that instrument, but you will find Country Waltz. That's also a really, really nice one. And uh, here's another good suggestion. If you have an aria, and maybe someone can correct me, it might be on the Grand Marquis as well. This song has a signature style. It's called Could I Have Three Quarters. And if you have that style, that's the one you should use. You're not going to find a better one than the signature style. Um, I'll let you hear a little bit of what those two waltzes sound like. Here's the southern three quarters. I used it a moment ago to play the Tennessee Waltz. And it sounds really nice with Could I Have This Dance as well. Here's Country Waltz. Both 
both sound really nice. I like them both. If you have one of the instruments that has both of those styles, try them both out. See which one you're going to like best. Um, I almost went with Southern Three Quarters, but I decided to use Country Waltz uh, for this song because it has an altar style that I like the sound of for the verses, and I'll talk more about that soon. Um, now, if you don't love country music, what if you're not a big country fan? This song sounds nice with any walls. If you want to do it in a more orchestral style, you could try some of the more string-based orchestral waltzes. And, um, and uh, let, me, uh, let me find one of the nice ones on here. This one's called Smooth Orchestra 3-4. see that's really pretty that's a nice sound too if you don't like country music very much try that out I, now um, so that's styles for right hand sounds you can use anything you like of course um, if you're not doing a country version then you might not want to pick country sounds uh, I would consider something like the category love songs if you have that one that's a very pretty category full of all kinds of really good sounds I will be using today the country category now for those of you who don't know how category presets work or even how presets work um, over here you can see my 10 some instruments have less right an easy 10 has five an easy four an easy one have none just the one style setup that comes on automatically and you're always going to get a good sound using these um, if i have my normal rhythm preset on or if on an e-series my style setup or if i'm on an sd my auto setup these all mean the same thing if that's on as i scroll through here i get sounds that match my style and they're all going to sound really good so here's i'm still on smooth orchestra three quarters Let's look at some of them. I'm going to stick just to the top keyboard. Here I have my orchestra with bell. Flute with strings. Vibe and organ. Strings with bell. Two bells. And as I continue to go through, here's a harmonica, here's a lush choir and lush strings, lush brass. They picked all these out to go with Smooth Orchestra 3-4 because they sound really nice with it. I'll be using over here in the country, the country category. The category setups work the same way. Each, they fill my 1 through 10 with sounds but I see someone's raised a hand go yes, ahead you have a question from iPhone oh iPhone I think I know them <laughs> are you able to unmute yourself please unmute yourself there you go okay how do you get the two the bell the, the dual sounds well At the same uh, time? on this particular background smooth orchestra three quarters it happens to be there automatically under number five um, and the way it works is it comes on with uh, with a, a harmony in there and it's it's I'm gonna be willing to bet that it's duet harmony for the two bells um, now there's a pattern to these presets uh, what what instrument do you have Rialto 
you have a Rialto. So your pattern is a little bit different from mine on here, but on this instrument, number five is always going to be nearly always some kind of bells or mallet instrument. And so if I like two bells, I'll reach up and press duet harmony and add it to my uh, my pre-existing sound. Um, inside the Rialto, I believe you also have a category called bells. And if you really like the sound of bells, you should experiment with something because they got a whole bunch of different types of bells with different sounds and different harmonies. Uh, do you know how to use your categories? A little bit. Um, so get with, with your, whoever your PA is for more detailed help. But in a nutshell, on a Rialto, you choose what category you want through the category select, but then you have to turn it on with the button right next to it. Yeah. And then yeah. that'll activate it. And over here, over on this side, I have five of these custom buttons. And if I have five of them, number four is my favorite button in the world. It brings up on the screen exactly what's inside so I can see without having to guess on them. Now, uh, maybe Sean or Joni can tell me uh, what that is on a Rialto. Is it custom two or three? That is custom number three on the Rialto. So if you touch that, it'll do what he's talking about. Thank you, Sean. I hope that Thank answered you. your question. Thank you. Custom number three on the Rialto. Custom number Thank three to much. bring up the screen so that you can see what's inside all of these. That's the, uh, the preset info or setup info screen. It's my favorite. So inside the country category, oh, and talking about categories. So what they do that's different from the rhythm preset is rhythm presets are tied to your rhythm. If you have an instrument where it's called style setup, it's a setup that's tied to your style. The category presets or setups don't care what style you're using. I'm inside country right now, and number five is a pedal steel, and it's a pedal steel no matter if I'm using country music over here or Latin music or big band. It simply does not care. It's always going to be that pedal steel. So I know it's been very helpful for me personally to have memorized just a handful of my favorite sounds and where they live in my categories. So if I want a really nice sounding trumpet, it's Latin number one, and it's always Latin number one on every single instrument. And I know I can get a really nice trumpet if I just go to Latin number one. If I'm playing, um, and here, here's a trick I learned from Carrie Price, if I'm playing any Italian music, I like to go over to the show category because number one and two sound, uh, sound really good for Italian music. The first one is the lyric accordion. And number two, it says zithers, but it sounds like the mandolin. So that's show number one and two. I like those sounds a lot, and I've put them up in my head so I know if I ever need an accordion, I can go to show number one. There it is. It doesn't matter what kind of music I'm playing. I'll be using the country category today, and I'm only going to use three of the presets inside of it. You're welcome to use as many or as few as you want. You can use any sounds that you like, but I'm going to teach you how to do um, my little arrangement that I've cooked up here. And the three that I'm going to use are country number zero, which is a dobro. That's a really cool sound. Anybody know what a dobro is here? I'll show you a picture. Let me type screen of, share. A type of guitar of some kind. It sure is. It's a type of guitar, specifically Dobro is the brand name for uh, resonator slide guitars, which um, kind of like Kleenex. You know, someone says, pass me a Kleenex rather than pass me a sanitary tissue yeah, or sure. whatever they're called. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to screen share here. I thought it's just if you need more money, you ask for some dough, bro. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. So uh, you can see some pictures here. It looks like a guitar, but it's got metal resonators in it that give it its distinctive sound. Um, it is played sideways, like you see how it's played like lap style rather than the way you would normally hold a guitar. Um, and the strings you may not be able to see are so high off the neck that you couldn't fret it if you tried. Instead, it's played with a metal or glass or ceramic slide, usually a, a metal one that gives it its distinctive country sound. And sometimes, look at this one here that I'm sort of highlighting, you can see sometimes the entire guitar is made of metal too. It's a very neat sound. It's used in country and blues music. So I'm gonna use that sound, the dobro. I'm also going to use, how do I stop screen sharing? There we go, learning as I go. Um, I'm also going to use country number nine, which is Floyd's Pianos. Uh, Floyd Kramer was a country pianist who, if you've been hanging around Fletcher for any length of time, you've probably heard of him. He has a signature sound that he called the slip note style, where um, you see us sometimes do these little grace notes. And the, uh, the Floyd version is pretty tricky to do. Last Date is maybe his most famous song that he wrote. And, and if you watch him or someone who really knows what they're doing, there, there's a whole, I can't even do it with one hand. He does it with one hand. It's got that sound. It's a very cool sound. The instruments will do it for you automatically if you have on Floyd's pianos. And in fact, the country harmony will automatically turn uh, many or most pianos into Floyd's piano. Um, Floyd Kramer, he was a, you know, he was a, a backing musician more than he was his own musician. He backed up all kinds of people. Most famously, he was Elvis's pianist for a long time. And when he finally let out Last Date, um, it got to number two on the charts, and the uh, only thing that kept it from going to number one was Elvis's Are You Lonesome Tonight, which guess who the piano player on that record was. <laughs> so that, that's a, a fun little fact there. Um, I'm going to use both of those sounds, Floyd's piano and the dobro, during the verses of this song. For the choruses, I'm going to use number 10, which it calls fiddles. If you're using the, uh, the country waltz uh, and you're using rhythm preset, then number zero, the signature sound for country waltz is called strangs, which is strings with a, with a southern twang. And, and that's a really good sound, too. I'm a big fan of the strangs sound. Um, and uh, I'm going to use that during the choruses because it's a bigger sound and because it has harmony. Um, arranging is one of my favorite parts of this hobby, getting to make a song sort of your own. And um, I've been listening into the classes and I've been hearing people talk a lot about the AABA song format, which is really cool. I'm glad you guys are learning that. Uh, this one's not AABA. This song format is just ABAB. And, and you can keep going as long as you want. It can be A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, if you want to play an extra long version of Could I Have This Dance. Um, and our A, our A is the verse, our B is the chorus. If, uh, if you don't know what those mean in, in terms of song structure, uh, a verse to a song is usually the part that's going to tell the story, and you'll have the, um, the words will be different every time, but the chords will be the same every time, the melody will be nearly the same, uh, you're gonna, they're going to sound alike but have different words each time. Now, the chorus is the part of the song that's going to be the most famous part. It's the part that you usually think of first when you think of the song, and it's, uh, uh, it's the part where the, everything's the same. Usually, every time, you're going to have the same words, the same, uh, the same melody, the same chords, and it's also usually the part of the song that has the song title in it as well. Um, when I'm arranging, I like to, more often than not, I'm, I'm a fan of using a smaller sound for verses and a bigger sound for choruses to really make those choruses pop and come alive. Um, and of the three sounds that I picked, those strings with the harmony are much bigger and I'll be using them in the choruses. I'll play the first verse with the dobro and I'll play the, uh, the second verse with the Floyd's piano and both of those sounds do something neat. Uh, we have a feature called glide, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'll use the glide on the strings, but both the dobro and Floyd sort of do it automatically, right? So Floyd has that slip tone that he called it, that, that neat fancy thing. The dobro, when I hit it hard, it does the glide for me automatically. That's a really cool sound and it saves my foot the trouble of having to do it by myself. And so I'm going to take advantage of that. I encourage you to give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. It's hard to do it first. The first when you first try it, every note's going to glide. It's going to sound like this. You don't want to glide every note. That makes your guitar player sound like he's had too much. But just, just pick a few here and there. Um, and, and I'll tell you, my favorite place to glide a lot of times is, and there's no right or wrong here. You glide wherever you like. As long as you don't do it too frequently, it'll sound great. But my personal favorite, I really like a lot of times to glide um, whatever the highest note in its vicinity is. You see what I'm doing there. Each one's the highest note, and that and, and doesn't really matter. But it, it's, uh, if you can't figure out which ones to do it on your own, then uh, that's a, a okay rule of thumb to help keep you from doing it too frequently. Um, there's multiple ways to glide. Um, glide on the, uh, the modern instruments starts on usually the second instrument up or the easy four, or the, the freedom three, and it starts with a kick switch, where you can kick your foot to the left to bend your note down and then release to bring it back up. Um, the kick switch is one of the harder ways to do the glide. I've gotten used to it myself. I've come to, to like using the kick switch for the glide. Um, but uh, a lot of people are much happier putting it somewhere else. Um, you can put it on your pedals. I'll talk about a way to do that here in just a minute. Um, if you have something like an easy 10, though, you can just press a single button over here to scoot it over to the pedals being on glide. You can also, it comes on, if you have touch bars, if you have two touch bars, it comes on the right one by default. But I find that to be the least useful place to put glide because my, my left hand is usually too busy over here playing chords to reach over and glide. Um, but you can put it on your pedals, and I'm not going to put it on my pedals because I like it on the kick switch, but I am going to put something else on my pedals, and they work the same way. So if you want to put glide on your pedals, here's how you do it. I'm going to go into the features on this instrument, and I'm going to go to page 9, which has dynamic keying and touch bar and foot switches and pedal natural black. These are our controllers, and they deserve their own entire workshop, but I'm going to go over them sort of quickly right now. Ignore dynamic keying, the next three. Touch bar, foot switches, pedal natural black. That's talking about these touch bars, my kick switches inside my expression pedal, and my long and my short bass pedals down here on the floor. And any one of those that I click on, it's going to bring up what's what they're currently set to. So in the left touch bar will be FX, the right touch bar will be glide. I'm going to go to pedal natural black. That's my bass pedals. When I touch it, it brings up this screen here where on the left it says pedal natural, and on the right it says pedal black, and each one has uh, a place where I can click and scroll and change what it says. Also, there's something that says pedal controllers. If your pedal controllers are not on, you're just going to get regular old bass notes. So if you're trying to do this, make sure you turn your pedal controllers on. Similarly, if you have a pedals off button over here, like I do, that can't be on because then the pedals are completely disconnected. So you want to make sure pedals off is not on, pedal controllers are on, and then they'll do whatever it says over here. Um, it'll probably come up initially as sound effects, and you can scroll through all the different types of sound effects that there are. So there's my car, Auga, and I've got all kinds of other stuff too. Ready, uh. So that's fun stuff, right? Um, 
Who knows uh, who wrote the song Crazy while we're talking about country songs? Who wrote Crazy? Willie Nelson. Very good. So you get the game show correct sound. (laughs) A lot of times people say Patsy Cline, then you got to do this one. <laughs> Very good. You guys know your know your trivia. Um, so anyway, there's all kinds of sound effects, and that's that's fun. But there's some actually really useful, neat stuff in here that you can do. Um, I already mentioned that there is glide and FX or fill. You can set either of those to your long pedals or to your short pedals. You can make it be the light show. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. You can make it be tap tempo. Um, I told you I don't like to put glide over on my right touch bar because I, I can't use it in my hands. I need a third hand to do that. But I will put tap tempo over here so I can figure out what speed I'm trying to play at or how fast is someone playing on YouTube or something like that. Uh, you can transpose with your pedals up or down. You can increase or decrease your tempo. You can put fade out or intro ending on the, the pedals. You can even make the pedals turn regular one finger chords into their minor version or their seventh version or their diminished version or whatever. So if you only have one finger on your left hand and you, don't, you can't play minor chords, you put the minor on your pedals. And if you want to play an A minor, you press A and a pedal. The one I'm going to be using today, though, this is a personal favorite of mine. I really, really like this feature, and it's called Start-Stop. And here's where things get a little confusing. It is different from this Start-Stop. This Start-Stop, let me get a background going. This Start-Stop will start and stop my background. Now, obviously, we don't start with the start button. We start with a chord. Because if you try to start with the start button, you might end up with the wrong chord. So just start by playing, stop with the button. But inside these features, inside these controllers, when it says start, stop here, that is different from this start, stop over here. There's another option called auto, start, stop. Auto, start, stop is the same as this start stop over here the one that's on your panel the regular old start stop inside the features it's called auto start stop but the one that has the same name regular old start stop does something much cooler what it does is it'll stop the background but leave the easy button on so that if i play a chord i still get a chord but no background like so So I stomped, I've got my chords, and then when I stomp on my pedal, the background comes back again. Now this is a fantastic arranging tool because no one wants to try to mess with the tempo while you're playing for, you know, real bands sometimes slow down and that that's difficult for us to do but this allows me to do it by putting start stop on my pedals and the way i'm going to use it in this song is i'm going to take in your music if you have the same music as me it's measures 27 28 29 and 30. those four measures i'm going to use them at both the beginning and the end of my song but with this start stop feature Let me show you what it sounds like. That's it. Just that little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing at the end, too. Um, It's uh, very common when musicians finish songs that whatever the very last little bit of the song was, they'll go and do that last little bit once more, or sometimes more than once more. That's called a tag. And I'm going to tag the ending by going back to that point. It's going to sound like this here at the end of the song.
so that gives me a little break there at the end, lets me make my ending a little bit more emotional, a little bit more melodramatic, which is a good thing in a slow love song like this. Now, the other thing I'm going to do with my tag is I'm going to extend the ending a little bit. Now, I'm talking about this is after I've already played both pages of my song twice, right? I'm going to do my introduction, then I'm going to go through the whole verse, then the whole chorus, then I'm going to repeat back, do my second verse, my second chorus, and then when I get here to the end, instead of pressing ending like my music says, that's when I'm going to stomp my pedal to be using only the easy button, go back to measure uh, 27, I'm going to play 27, 28, 29, and 30, just like I did in the intro with nothing but the easy button. Then I'm going to kick my background back on, and I'm going to finish off the song, but measure uh, 33 right here. That's D7, the rest of my right before life. I'm going to drag those notes out. Instead of playing them as quarter notes in one measure, uh, I'm going to play them like... Each note gets its own whole measure almost. So like this, instead of So then the last time See, really taking my time with it there, letting it kind of drag on. And I'm going to do one final little trick at the end as well. Um, stop me from going too fast here. Anyone feel free to holler out a question if you need something repeated. But I'm going to give it, after that tag, I'm going to give it what, uh, what a lot of musicians call the church ending, which is where in this key, this song is in the key of G. You can tell because the last chord is a G, and 90% of the time, the last chord of the song is the key that it's in. Um, so in the key of G, what I'm going to do is when I get to that end of... Instead of coming back to my G at the end, I'm going to instead play a C chord. then a C minor and then a, and then back to my G hey Andrew if I put the uh, music up on the screen can you tell us where where you're making these uh, or where you're putting this absolutely here? yeah um, so we're, this is all on page two okay so here's page one I'm gonna scroll down to page two for everybody and then here's talking about this ending here. Let me All right. Here. So this little spot where I am tagging back to the, the important part starts at measure 27, which if you look over on the left, there's little measure numbers, 19 and then 22 and then 25 and then 28. And you can use that to figure out where you are in the song. So measure 27 is line three, measure three, right? And I'm going to, after I finish the entire song, I am going to go back to that measure using just the easy button, which I arranged with my pedals. Play four measures, so, right so here. all the way through the C minor. So does that look good right there? Absolutely. Put, okay. put another one after the C minor measure. Right here? Perfect. So other than that A note, ignore that little A note at the end. Other than that, that's going to be what I do in the beginning and the end of the song. And then this last time, when I'm coming out at the end, I'm going to continue on with the background from the, oh, you guys can't see me pointing, but uh, the G chord at the second to last line, and then at that D7 chord, that's where I'm really drawing those notes out and letting them take like a measure each. That's I'm doing that at the D7 chord. And then the very final G of the song, the last chord right before you press the ending, to give it the church ending, you would instead of playing a G chord, play a C minor chord for one measure. Sorry, excuse me, play a C chord for one measure and then a C minor chord for one measure. And then back to the G. It sounds like this. Uh, 
and, and then I'll press my ending. Yeah. Exactly like Sean just wrote there. That's perfect. Thank you so much for that, Sean. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, musicians call that the church ending uh, because it, it's, it often works best with hymns. Uh, you can do the same thing in Amazing Grace or something like that, and it sounds amazing. Um, now, most of the songs that we play are in the key of C, not G, right? So here's how you do it when you are in the key of C, not G. If you're playing a song in the key of C, follow the exact same steps, but instead of C, then C minor, then G, it's F, then F minor, then C. Here, watch Amazing Grace. Normally, we would go back to C, but I'm going to go back to F. F minor. C. Really, really great at the end of hymns, and I'm going to use it here as well, and could I have this dance? Um, So, uh, so that's the, uh, they got all the chords on here. There's not much notes I think you need to make on your music. Um, if you take a peek at the first measure of the third line, measure six, uh, you'll see that there the first the two notes there they say B and A, but they're both on the A line. The the B is correct. It is B and then A. It's not two A's. Um, you can add in fills. Fills sound really good. If I was playing this, well, I'm playing this song. When I'm playing this song, I'm going to put my fills on, let's see, uh, I could do one on measure 10. Um, I may not the first time because I don't want to get too excited yet. Um, measure 18 or measures 17 and 18. That's one of the best places in the whole song to do a fill because that's coming into the chorus. You should always do a fill right before your chorus starts. Um, I like another one at measure 26. I think a fill sounds great there. Um, and then again at the end, at the, you can do it as you're coming out of your chorus if you want to. I may or may not do that. So I'm going to not, so just to walk you through again, I'm on, I'm on country waltz. Use whichever one you like. Use could I have 3-4 or southern 3-4. I'll be on country waltz. I'll be using the country category numbers 0, 9, and 10. I'm only staying on the top keyboard. I'm going to start the song on 0 um, for the first verse, 10 for the chorus, 9 for the next verse, 10 for the chorus again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my... my pedal set up. Not at chords here, not at the background, but but easy button style. So that when I stomp my pedal, and I'll try to make it real obvious, I know you can't really see my feet, I'll try to make it obvious when I stomp the pedal. It's gonna kick my background back in. Um, so uh, here, I'm gonna play it once through and then I'll open it up to any questions and then we're done.
A really nice song, very pretty, not terribly difficult. Are there any questions? We got time and for you just save a those to a stick. I'm sorry. And you save those to a stick, and how do it? You absolutely could. I I chose not to. I usually don't save things to a stick myself, just because the Bill Curry did such a good job putting the sounds in here. I'm almost always able to find what I like. But you absolutely could, and it would make the process a little bit easier yet. Um, I'm sure someone's doing uh, doing sticks soon in a workshop, and, and that would make the whole process even easier. Anytime you saw me reaching up and pressing a button, all I would have had to do is go on to the next one. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Any, anyone else? A, B. Is B the same as bridge? No, and, and in fact, that's uh, one of the reasons the, the letter way of describing this is so popular. What even is a bridge? It kind of changes depending on what type of music we're talking about. The old standards, the AABA 32 bar standards, it was uh, uh, basically the A part was the chorus and the B part was the bridge, and the bridge was just the part that comes in the middle of the song. Nowadays, in popular music, a bridge has sort of a different meaning. A lot of times a song will be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then a bridge set in to spice things up and make it a little bit different somewhere in the middle. Um, in this particular example, uh, a, the A part would be the verse, so page one, and then the B part would be the chorus, which is page two. Um, and and th those terms get, get confusing, and there's other ones that we don't burden you with, like the middle eight and stuff like that. We don't, we don't bother you with all that junk. So rather than getting confused on the nomenclature, instead it's much easier just to call whatever part comes first in the song the A part, whatever part comes second is going to be the B part, and if we have a third part, it can be the C part, and so on. Good. Thank you. Amy, do you have a question? Can I mute? Can you hear me? Yep. I can. Okay. I love classically piano sound. Where can I find it? I have Rialto. I don't know what setting or buttons to press. Sean, do you know if the Rialto has Pianos Plus? I believe it does. There's a category in your instrument called Pianos Plus. So look in the category setups on the screen and look for one that says Pianos Plus, and it'll have all sorts of different pianos. Yeah, they're very, okay. very good so pianos. And category that. and then Piano Plus? plus? Yep. yep, you might have oh. to look through the screen. There's yeah. on the touch you'll, screen. You'll have to search several. around for oh. Pianos Plus, but uh, but inside it, it's got a bunch of different options. The uh, the number zero is an amazing grand piano, uh, and I believe number ten is Piano Rama, which comes with a big old harmony and a string orchestra attached to it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do some announcements on our way out here, and then uh, Andrew is going to play one more last song here, just to kind of close out. Just something fun here. I'll let him uh, figure something out there, and. He's going to play a song on our way out, but before uh, he does that, just a couple things coming up. As Robert mentioned earlier, Friday, we have a wonderful concert set up for you. We're going to be playing music uh, from the stage and screen. So that's Broadway musicals, uh, things like that, as well as uh, songs from movies you might remember from the 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s. I don't know. We'll see. So uh, don't miss that. That's Friday, 11 o'clock Arizona, 2 p.m. in Florida. Check your time zones if you're somewhere else. I see somebody's from Maryland here, so uh, make sure you come to the right time. Uh, it'll be the same time as this class, so just on Friday. 
And just when you thought uh, that was enough, we've got so much planned for next week, too. We've got a lot of cool activities, uh, some really, really great concert stuff set up uh, for next week as well, and a different instructor for your regular class. So all sorts of cool stuff coming up. So just uh, come to everything we do, and then you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to throw it back to Andrew. Uh, I will say one more thing. If you're interested, if you got nothing to do tomorrow, uh, 2 p.m. Arizona, that would be 5 p.m., I guess, Florida. Uh, tomorrow, if you check our website, if you go to our Mesa location, we're actually doing a uh, blues class. So you can check that out if uh, you want to. But you have to go on our website, go to the Mesa location, and look at our calendar. Uh, we have a guy named Bart here who's going to be doing a class about the blues. So if you're curious about that, pop in tomorrow. But uh, here's Andrew with a finale song. All right, one more song. Um, while we're on the subject of, uh, oh, Stan, do you have a question? Yes, uh, I see you're using Easy Play. Um, I don't have that particular song. Where would I find it? Well, I got an answer for that. It's uh, if you have a computer, I did put it in the chat for this uh, session here. If you're on a phone or something like that, or an iPad, it looks like you are, uh, it'll be yep. in your email. So check the email. It's going to have a uh, class materials sent out uh, this Saturday. And I think Robert sent it out in the email today. So you can check today's email. It might be in there as well. Okay? Good. Thank you, Sean. All right. So um, th this is not normally done as a country song. But uh, I, I found the, the, the Garth's Friends background, which is meant for Garth Brooks' song, Friends in Low Places, uh, just really matched it really well. And so for me, this is a country song now.
Good job, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thank you guys so very much. This was a, a ton of very fun, good. and I look good forward job. to doing it more. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you yeah. soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. All right.